Hey, how do you guys hang your deer? Head up or head down? Hey there outdoor YouTubers, it's Dave Knetter from Knetter's Practical Outdoors. And today I'd like to talk a little bit about how we hang our deer for processing and skinning. Okay? A while back I did a deer skinning video. Okay, if you go to my channel, Knetter's Practical Outdoors, I have a deer processing playlist. I, I have several videos in that deer processing playlist, but one of them is how to skin a deer. And uh, there's been a lot of comments and a lot of conversation generated from that video. In that video, I'm skinning the deer and I have it hanging head up. Okay, and I, I've gotten a lot of comments, you know, why would you hang your deer head up? Uh, that's crazy to hang your deer head up. Um, you're a terrible person for hanging your deer head up. You know, you know how those uh, comments it can get a little out of control sometimes. But, um, you know, I really wish I would have addressed that uh, in that video. And I even did get one comment that said, hey, why don't you make a video explaining why you hang the deer head up? So, you know, here we are. Now, first of all, hanging a deer by the hind legs with the head down is a perfectly fine way to hang a deer for skinning, for processing. There is nothing wrong with that. It's perfectly fine. If that's the way that you like to hang your deer and you're happy with that way, by all means, keep doing that that way. I am not trying to convince anybody to change the ways uh, how they uh, hang a deer, okay? But um, I thought that I would talk a little bit about why I actually hang them head up, okay? Now, first and foremost, that was the way I was taught, okay? My dad taught me how to skin a deer. My dad taught me how to process a deer, and that's the way he liked to do it. He liked to hang them head up, okay? And, and really, if, if you guys out there uh, hang the deer the other way with the head down, and that's the reason you do it, because that's the way you were shown, that's more than good enough, okay? But it does go a little bit further than that, and uh, I'll, I'll explain a little bit here. Okay, first of all, I'll give you a little background uh, with my dad. My dad is a career meat cutter, okay? That, that's what he's done for a living his whole life, cut meat. Um, the bulk of his career was spent, you know, like in the grocery store, meat department uh, area. Uh, so that's what he did for the bulk of his career. But he actually did spend some time in packing houses, you know, uh, where the, the full animals come in, uh, packaging uh, the beef. So he spent some time doing that. And also, for many, many, many years, um, as a side job, he would process whitetail deer, you know, during deer season. So not only has he processed full cows, full pigs, uh, you know, bulk of his career in the grocery store, uh, he has also, you know, skinned and processed literally thousands of whitetail deer. Okay, so that's a little bit on his background. That's the person that showed me uh, how to skin a deer, how to process a deer, and that's the person that kind of influenced me into hanging them head up. Some of the comments I get um, are the variety of, hey, they always hang cows and pigs by the back legs with the head down, so that must be the correct way to do it. And, and you're right, they do. Uh, in fact, you know, I, I talked to my dad a little bit about that, and he said yes, when he worked in the packing house, that is how they hung the animals. They hung them head down, feet up, you know, spread eagle, and you know, a lot of times that's what you'll see on the farm, that's what you'll see in the slaughterhouses, and you know, there's a couple reasons for it. First of all, farm animals, animals at the slaughterhouse, they are generally killed or put down by some kind of force to the head, you know. Uh, several different ways, won't get into it, but they are generally killed by a force to the head. Once they're killed, they're bled out. So immediately after they're killed, their neck gets slit, they get hung up by the back legs, and then all the blood can drain down out that cut in the neck. And, and that's the desirable thing to do with these farm animals, right? Well, 
you know, that doesn't necessarily apply to white-tailed deer, right? I mean, if you think about it, you know, me personally, I go out in the woods, I shoot a deer. Generally speaking, there's going to be some, I'm going to be putting a bullet or an arrow through, you know, something around the chest cavity. And then immediately upon me getting this deer, retrieving this deer, I'm going to gut it out, okay? I, I gut my deer out in the field. Uh, a lot of guys do. Some guys don't. But I do gut my deer out in the field. Uh, it makes sense for me because a lot of times I'm dragging this deer by hand through the woods, you know, uh, quite a distance at times, and I want to lessen the weight. I want to get those guts out. That, that's how I do it. And when I gut the deer, I remove the whole anal cavity, okay, the, the anus. I open up the pelvic bone. I open that all up, and there's a nice big opening, you know, in the butt area of the deer. Then when I get back to my camp, when I get back to the house with the deer, I flush the, the chest cavity out with water. And then I immediately hang it up. So when I hang that deer, anything left in there, any little bit of blood, any little bit of uh, undesirable stuff in there can actually drain out down that anal cavity, you know, through that opening with that opened up pelvic bone, can drain right out and, and get out of the deer. Okay, so, you know, like I say, if you think about it, you're, you know, if you're gutting this deer in the field, you're shooting this deer, you know, through the chest, you're pulling the heart, you're pulling the lungs out when you gut it, that deer is bled out, okay? Once that takes place, there is really no reason to slit the throat of the deer and hang him head down and let it bleed out. If you're gutting him, you know, out in the field, it, it just, there's just no reason for it, okay? Another reason for hanging these larger animals uh, with the back legs up, you know, they... they they do that out the farm a lot. They do that uh, in the packaging houses. You know, they're hanging back legs up, kind of spread eagle. Is almost immediately those animals are cut right down the middle with a saw, J just for ease of handling and and ease of processing. You know, like my dad said, uh, in the packaging house, you know, like the the right side of the cow would would go down one assembly line. The left side of the cow would go down the other assembly line. And those cutters in those lines were used to dealing with that side of the cow, whichever one they were on. So, you know, that's another reason um, that out on the farm, in the slaughterhouse, in the packaging houses, they do like to hang them back legs up. It makes it much easier to split down the middle. If you think about it, if they were head up, it would be a little more cumbersome to try to split them down the middle. Now, of course, with a white-tailed deer, that doesn't apply as much. White-tailed deer is so much of a smaller animal um, when we're processing the deer it, it, we really don't split them down the middle I, I don't think a lot of people actually do in fact you know you can even you know sink that meat hook into the into the hind quarters and and cut them off as one solid piece and just flip it up you know on the bench where you're cutting it's it's really a non-issue and then uh, We'll split that once it's on the bench. It, it really doesn't need to be split as it's hanging because the weight isn't too much to handle, you know. Weight tail deer is so much smaller. So I think, uh, you know, through time there's been a lot of carryover from the packaging houses, from the slaughterhouses, from the farms. There's been a lot of carryover from those bigger animals to deer, you know. And, and that's probably why a lot of people do like to hang them you know, by the back legs, because that's what they've seen, that's what they've been shown, that's what a lot of professionals do. You know, another reason that uh, I hang my deer head up is I truly believe it's easier to skin them that way. Um, now, a lot of you guys might not think it makes too much of a difference, and, and you know, maybe it doesn't, you know, maybe I'm just uh, splitting deer hairs here, but it seems like when you get around, like the front shoulders, uh, especially in the armpit areas, it just seems like when you're pulling down on that, it actually comes out from that armpit area a lot easier than if it was, you know, upside down and you'd have to skin down into that armpit area and then back up. Just seems like it pulls away a lot easier when they're hanging head up. You know, a lot of times uh, I'm skinning deer that have uh, that have been hanging for a few days. You know, uh, we get some pretty cold weather during deer season where I live, and uh, the deer's they can lock up and get a little tight, you know, the skin doesn't just come flying off them that easy. So I really do think that, especially those front shoulders, I think that skin does come off a lot better 
you know when you're when you're pulling down toward the back of the deer and you know honestly I, I do believe it just makes the overall processing of the deer easier you know like I said you can, you can grab those uh, hind quarters in, in one piece flip them up on the bench um, you know of course you can grab the shoulders off now I, I understand you can take shoulders off you know either position but uh, you know when you when it's when it's hanging back legs up and it's hanging off that gambrel right um, you know it gets a little tippy you know you're trying to get one uh, one or both of them off at the same time and it just seems a little more cumbersome to me so I really do believe uh, that it makes for you know pretty easy processing too just you know for the way we do it you know like I say if you're doing things a different way that's perfectly fine I'm not here to change anybody's mind I'm just here to explain why I do prefer to hang the deer head up now if you were going to have this deer mounted right you're gonna get a shoulder mount or a head mount and you're gonna have to cape this deer out which you know means you're going to want to leave a lot of that hide attached to the head then you would want to go back legs up you know work the hide down all around until it got around the head area and leave that all intact right you don't want to be making that incision around the base of the neck you know for obvious reasons right you're gonna make uh, life a lot harder on your taxidermist uh, if you do that so that's the one instance where I would uh, hang a deer head down as if I was going to be caping it out uh, for mounting purposes. So if you're at all curious about how my dad processes a deer, um, you know, again, go to my channel, Knetter's Practical Outdoors, and I have an entire playlist that is just deer processing. Um, we got a six part series that's just my dad basically processing a deer. Uh, we also have that video I talked about earlier uh, about me skinning a deer. Uh, if you're at all curious about uh, when I was talking about gutting the deer, how I take the whole uh, anus track out and I open up the pelvic bone, um, I got a, you know, gutting a deer video. So if you're curious at all about uh, some of the stuff I'm talking about, if you're curious at all about the head hanging up and processing, skinning, um, go ahead, go to my channel, go to that deer processing playlist and check out those videos. So overall, I like to hang my deer head up. Um, I like that drainage you get by having that nice open pelvic area being at the bottom of the deer. Everything can drain out of that chest cavity. I actually do believe that they're easier to skin that way, especially when you get around these armpit areas. You know, like I say, I think it's a lot easier just to pull that hide down over the top of the shoulder as opposed to pulling it down into the armpit and then back out. Uh, I just think that goes easier. And I really do think it's a lot easier um, just to go up to that hanging deer when it's, when it's heads up and just grab the different sections off, cut the different sections off, throw them up on the bench. Uh, I just think it's a lot easier, you know, like I say, when you got those back legs hanging by that gambrel, sometimes it's, uh, it gets a little swinging around. If you're trying to take one off, it can get tippy. If you're trying to take them both off, you kind of got to lift them a funky way. Um, you know, you got to worry about the tendons coming loose and, and slipping. So, uh, just, just all those little things combined, it just makes sense to me to hang the deer head up. And again, if you've been hanging them by the back legs with the head down, that's perfectly fine, right? If you've been happy with that, by all means, keep doing it. I'm not trying to change anybody's mind. It just seemed like when I did that deer skinning video, it seemed like there was enough conversation about, you know, hanging them head up, hanging them head down, to maybe warrant uh, me coming on, doing another video, and just talking about why I like to hang them head up. But again, not trying to change anybody's mind. You keep doing it the way you like to do it. I love that you hunters and you deer processors are that passionate about how to hang a deer. You know, I, I, I think that's pretty cool that uh, we all have our, our ways we like to do things, and I think that's pretty cool that a lot of us are pretty passionate about the way we do things. All right. So anyways, hey guys, uh, remember to hunt, fish, laugh, repeat. This is Dave Knetter from Knetter's Practical Outdoors. Hey, thanks for watching and God bless.